Good afternoon and welcome to the Otago Community Board meeting for April. Um, if I can ask Kat, Kat's going to do our words of wisdom today for us. Uh, so this is one that was in my calendar this morning and it's from Helen Keller and it says, alone we can do so little and together we can do so much. Thanks, Kat. Um, we've got apologies from Joe Butcher, Steve Hughes, and Tori Korahiki. Can I have a move for a second, please? <laughs> Pete and Kat, no, I don't, but you know. <laughs> um, and then we've got our public forum, and yay, we've got Trish Fisher is going to pop up and present to us first, and then we've got Bill Miller after Trish. Welcome, Trish. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm here on behalf of a small group of local people that would like to put on a celebration of the 100th birthday of the Oak Tonga Railway Station. So it turns 100 in June. We've picked the 8th of June because there is no official date of its opening. It was somewhere between the 7th and the 13th. So we've gone with the 8th being a Saturday. And we'd like to close off Wahanui Crescent and open it up to the market, have a big sound stage and have various live entertainment throughout the day. I've got a quote from a fire dancer and from stilt walkers. Um, I've been in contact with a gentleman with a vintage car and also the vintage tractors. And we're trying to get a hold of a vintage fire truck and uh, ambulance. Um, so we kind of want to create everything that's old, sort of looking back 100 years. We're um, This school holiday is on the 18th of April. We're having a program where school children will go to the railway station, meet with elderly people from definitely um, Toolview and Tikawiri, but possibly Beatty Home here in Oaktahonga, talking about what rail was like 100 years ago. And then those children are going to do um, artwork depicting 100 years ago today and 100 years in the future. And as part of the festival, we would like to crack open the safe in the railway station. We're still trying to work out how to do that and make that a time capsule and put some of those artworks into the time capsule. We're planning on having an exhibition within the railway station that will be a bit more about the railway station. And then in the museum, they'll be having an exhibition on New Zealand Rail. So we want to do a little treasure map of the town and involve lots of different parts of the town. So Wahanui Crescent would be where we would have the market and, and most of the entertainment. The vintage vehicles we're hoping to have down by the Oaktahonga Club. Then in the library, we'd be having colouring in competitions for the children. There'd be the exhibition at the museum. So we'd like to have a little treasure map where they can go around the town and find different activities that are happening around the town. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about the day. Um, so live music, dances, still walkers, I think I've got everything on there. Um, I have included a budget. I think Kaya might have shared that with you already. So obviously our biggest expense is closing the road. Um, and then at the moment we're looking at just over $11,000 for the day. The more money that we can raise, the more things that we can do, or the, the grander we can do the scale of what we've got. But on the basic budget, we're looking at just over $11,000. And you'll see on the last page, I've put where we are applying funding at the moment. So I have put an application to the community fund, but I believe that's a maximum of 5,000 if we get the maximum. Um, also the Oaktahonga Charitable Trust, which is a maximum of 1,000. The Lions Company, which is also a maximum of a thousand, and I've approached the Lions Club, and they're very keen, but they don't meet until the seventeenth of April. A lot of these meetings aren't going to take place until a bit later in April. So at this stage, we have 
No, I say I was going to say no funding. We have had a kind donation from the Green Cart in Tikawiti of two hundred and ten dollars. So we're on the road. <laughs> we just need to make up the rest, and that's where I'm hoping we might be able to get some help. Any questions? Hey, Kat, have you got any questions for Josh? Sorry, of that. 2300 for sound PA and stage. Do you have any idea how much of that is for the higher sound system? So it's the truck that I don't know if you went to the um, Christmas market down at the island reserve where they have a truck. There's um, some okay. yeah, yeah, it's sort of a truck which is the stage and is all yeah. the sound. And no, all that's that's fine. I was just saying that we could we put a sound system that we would be prepared to be able to use, but if it's all coming oh. together, then there's no point. It's all good. Trish, when do you find out about your funding for my truck on the community fund, charitable trust, and lines? Uh, the Lions Company, I don't have a date. They have their close off was the 31st of March, um, and they've just said that they've received the application and they'll be in contact in due course. If I'm not wrong, the fund one is the 22nd of April. Yeah. I can. Um, so the council funds, we're meeting on the 17th of April for deliberation. So we will know the results by the 18th of April. And it might be the charitable trust that's somewhere around about 17th, 22nd. I've got the 22nd in my head for a reason, but I can't think what. But yes, it's all kind of towards the mid-end of this month. Any more questions, Kat or Pete? Okay. Um, the road closure, is that for with Infomax or is that with Council? It's with Infomax. Infomax, okay. And... Pete just mentioned his PA system. Would the group look at, because we've got so many trucking firms in the um, town that often donate their flat decks as a stage and then, so there's no cost, and then if Thrive donated a PA, PA system, that would wipe two grand off. Is that something the group could look at? or Yes, certainly. Um, only reason I'm asking is because I know the community fund on the 17th or 18th of April, there's no given that you'd get the maximum because no it's idea. quite oversubscribed. Yeah. Like Nikki's doing <laughs> such a good job at getting applicants. It's Yeah, so I'm just wondering if... The yeah. group has like a con contingency plan if you, we can't find all the eleven thousand dollars. That's all. Yeah, yeah. I guess um, we could certainly look at doing that. We've kind of looked at it at this stage as a package. This is kind of like our ideal scenario. But yeah. um, yeah, if we don't get sufficient funding, we could maybe look at changing that. Okay. Um, that's probably. Yeah, all from me. Um, so we won't make a decision today. Um, if we've only got three of us here today, I'd actually prefer it if everyone was here to make the decision. Um, how soon does that Infomax have to be paid? That's a really good question. <laughs> I don't have the answer to that. So we've already started work on getting some artwork designed because we want to get that around so that we can start promoting the market stalls and things like that. So that's where we've kind of started spending our money or certainly instructed people to go ahead. Um, the gentleman from Infomax that gave me the quote is actually away on holiday, so um, I'm not sure when we have to fully commit to them as to whether it's going ahead. Okay. Um, I have put in our application to the council for the event, and I don't know at what point I get a response from that either to actually have permission that we can do it anyway. Okay, so we need, okay, so that needs to be followed up. So with another question that's just popped into my head. So with the traffic management plan, you're not planning on shutting it from the state highway? 
No, we'd like to yep. actually keep the car, the council car park open and we'd like to close it to the bed so that actually it keeps that side, road that yep. goes around the back to where yep. the car is. Because that would be where your more expense would come in if you're yeah. on the state highway. Okay. Um, yeah. So I suppose, is that everything you guys need? Speaker, sorry, Pete, start again. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if there's a truck available, that option is there, I think, yeah. Thank you. All good. Okay, so, yeah. Um, we'll come back to you, Trish. Like, yeah. Um, thank you for coming in. Thank I think you. it's a fantastic event. And, yeah, I know that we really want to help, yeah, see you pull it off. Lovely. In such a short time frame. Oh, you know. guys are amazing. <laughs> There's nothing like leaving it. Yeah, the yeah. Last pressure, <laughs> pressure on, pressure on. Um, yeah, but definitely I, I would suggest talking to the group about Pete's offer and a local truck because, yeah, that's wipes 2K straight away. Okay. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Trish. You. And now we have Bill Miller. Welcome, Bill. about seven items on my calendar where well, I, I had the pleasure of attending the 160s uh, Battle of Arakau this morning. Remind me because about two years ago I approached the District Council of getting the story of the New Zealand land on the council wall. Nothing's been done to my knowledge. Okay, I'll answer that. So that wall out there is not councils, it's Kiwianas. So we need to talk to Moraine Hurley, the chair of Kiwiana. That is of paramount importance to our history. Yeah, I agree, Bill. Totally agree with you. So today. I will follow that up with Moraine and come back to you. So that's one tip for me to do. Another problem I see, I know you don't agree, but that we got um, disability toilets. Now, about 12 months ago, a local farmer had to bring his 25-year-old daughter. He had to go into Lady's Loop. Just about two weeks ago, another man, 84, no, sorry, 94, his daughter had to take him into the men's disability toilets. I don't think that's fair. And uh, with Carpi, you've got a separate handicapped toilet where people can go in. Is there any chance of... On the right hand side, where there's a toilet not being used, opened up for disability. So yeah. even babies could and mothers could take children. Even I was in the toilet the other day, a man brought his um, three year old daughter in the men's room. Because you were coming to speak to this last month, I've actually talked to our, I think, community facilities manager, Jared, and Jared's actually looking at it right now to make that a disability toilet. There's a few issues. It just needs a little bit of a ramp and the door needs widening and we need to make it more secure into the ladies' toilets. So it's definitely on the to-do list. The other thing... And uh, thank uh, you for bringing it to our attention. Other item about the loose. I, I don't know where people get their um, idea that a historic tree. I think that should re re be removed and tidy up the gardens not the gardens, uh, make it a presentation law and it needs a uh, ramp where people park their cars, angle park from the robo bank in towards the toilet. Then you've got to go behind the cars and be careful of people backing out of robo bank or think there should be a little alleyway on the as they park in front of their cars, uh, remove the barrier and tidy up the, gar uh, the tables. Believe it or not, uh, a lot of people take a photos of, of of the signage on there. That, but it doesn't look good with a ho ho hocus pocus tables, in my opinion. And guess what? They're next to be replaced in town <laughs> because, yeah, I agree with you. I water the baskets in the mornings, and I look across at those tables with one plank to sit on, and they're falling apart. So they're definitely on the list and they should be done within the next few months. 
Um, oh. And then I'm pretty sure the Robo car park isn't ours. Do you know, Andrew? Okay. So, yeah. So, what are you wanting a footpath along the front of it? Yes, yes. yes. So, people don't have to go behind their vehicles to go to the bathrooms. Now, some days we always growl where people are parked on bus stops. In the last mm. week, buses were parking on the normal local toilet stop. Yeah. Sometimes there's over 500 people on buses. When students come down on, on um, five buses and well and, and it's not good they can't the locals then gotta find somewhere else to park. It, it's the hardest place to find parking in the Wahanui Crescent. It's gonna be even harder soon when the fire fire station takes back their car park. <laughs> So um, I haven't got an answer for you on that one, but I've if you to... want people to shop, they've got to be able to stop. Yep, I agree. You've done the town beautiful, yep. all painted up, but if you can't stop, you yep. can't shop. I was down the South Island two years ago. One toilet, I forgot the, where it is. These facilities are being paid by the rate players. Please support the the businesses of this town. Okay, that's. Uh, you know, it'll brighten my uh, day up when I see that happen. Thank you. Um, water. There seemed to be water leaking by the fire station drains. It's been doing it on for year, years and years. It must be a show dribble. Dribble. And another thing with the public toilets. Is the, have you, when you've seen that leak by the fire station, have you let the girls know at reception so they can log a service I've seen, request? I've seen somebody a couple of uh, months ago, but it's still a slow leak there. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll log a service request now, for you, Bill. The big issue also is water, water. Believe it or not, I believe the urinals go all night, is that right? I don't know, sorry. We've got to take, take a leaf out of Carthia. Public toilet there, no water in the urinal. The brand new hotel, no water in the urinal. But all our waste at Carthia has got to come back to Otronga. Yeah, but that's, that's a different issue. The amount of uses of, uh, I'm not a mathematician, you've got to treat the water, you've got to pump it up the reservoir, download again, and when it's flushed down the toilet, Urinals, they got to pop up to up to the treatment station, and that's be colossal. I, you know, water it, it's a source of life. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you, Bill. I didn't even but hadn't even, even thought about the urinal going all night. So that's something I'll follow up yeah, with, Jared. It's, it's a common, yep. you know. Well, I think that's about all I have. To say. Oh no, yes, yes. Uh, new not Wahanui, Crown, Mayor Street. Wheelons, limestone in their drive. When they come out, they put limestone all across the road. When you get kids, bicycle or pedestrians parking on, uh, walking on the footpath, cars going past, here's a windscreen or, or, or um, limestone. In, in, yeah, it's in outside ground spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about because I. It's crossed my mind too, so I'm not 100% sure what we can do about that, but I will find out. Well, in Carpe, if you, you want to put a concrete beam so far up your drive, stop that the boots. Yeah, so but can... that's whether or not they'll want to pay for that. Yeah, but it's a condition of, of, of your drive, is it? You can't have all those stuff. No. Still, still have do you know Andrew? Okay, so I'll look into that. Thank you, Andrew. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, Chair of People, and I've got to go to the car now. Thanks, Bill. Well, thank Okay, so late items, we have none. Does anyone have to declare a conflict of interest? Well, I don't think so, because we haven't got any reports. Um, confirmation of the last meeting's minutes. 
Oh, okay. I'll move it and Kat will second that. We have no decision reports. And then we've got an information only report presented by Andrew Lowe. Proposed road naming and numbering policy. Yes, good afternoon, board. Um, just backtrack to Bill's comments about the properties in Wahanui Crescent. So I checked on our GIS, and it appears that there's a strip of land um, on which the running from the Rabo Bank back towards the council office, sort of, um, the car parking and the bus parks and all that looks like they're sit on council land. So, yeah, quite to the matters at hand. I'd like to um, take my report as read. Uh, the purpose of the report is just to bring this matter to your attention. Uh, it's been the subject of a couple of workshops with elected members. Uh, I think most of the changes proposed are canvassed in my report, and then the attached report has tried to, I mean, the attached draft of the policy has tried to capture all those, those matters. So, um, yeah, happy to take any questions or listen to any suggestions for improvement. Um, we've still got a couple of consultation phases to go through, so it's opportunities to make any changes before we bring the final policy to council for approval. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, Kat, have you got anything? So we'll just take the report as read and accept the report. Is that, we don't need a move on to get up. Yes, we do. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Pete and Kat. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Done. Um, Thanks, there was Andrew. One oh, little change oh, that sorry. I haven't. Yeah, sorry, there's just one small change that I haven't captured in that draft. And the suggest, <coughs> suggestion was made, made at the workshop that if the, um, to maybe just emphasize if there's an, a theme of existing names in the town at the time that perhaps people would. Wish to capture or enlarge upon that. I mean, I think we're, we're in Oatrong here, for example, we've got um, uh, uh, road names that commemorate battles sites in the Second World War. So that's just one example. All right, well, thank you for your time. So, Mark, speak, Pete. Sorry. Um, yeah, all stop and goes all reports. I'm just fascinated. I know what it's like producing assignments. I see this work. And the detail and the concentration that goes into getting it all. And thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Ditto, especially when you come up against people that nitpick like I do. Okay. Thanks. Um, so we've got no public excluded. Um, we'll move on to board projects. Um, so picnic in the park. Tori's not here, but Kat and I both attended. So I'll let Kat talk to it. Um, so the picnic in park was really well attended. Uh, people seemed happy to be able to come down and just enjoy their Friday afternoon. Lots of kids playing, even more adults that were around. Um, and we have sort of placed a list of everyone that donated, sponsored and helped us pull it together. And we'll do a thank you post later on this week. Cool, thanks Kat. I'll just do a shout out straight just to Enviro Waste for um, donating the bins and dropping them off and picking them up, but like Kat said, she'll do a list. Hey. Yeah, just to add to that, we had, to begin with, I wasn't sure what support there was going to be for the, for the climbing, but they, somebody saw somebody saw something up and saw signs or whatever, and and so yeah, by the time we'd finished there, and I came, I came driving past and saw by the time we'd packed up everything and put, um, but yeah, we had we had really good turnout on that, on that Friday evening as well, so oh, yeah. it was a good night, well done Abel, well done all. Awesome. Yeah. Shout out to Tori too. For um yeah, she did everything. We were just really her lackeys. So that was really cool. Um nothing to report on the fitness. Oh, I suppose there is. We've got some plans of some basic ones that we're getting quoted at the moment, and then we're just gonna talk to Jared about some places where they could go. So maybe in the next couple of months we might talk about some funding for those. Um, so yeah, the picnic in the park can come off. 
the list until next year. Um, and then the dog park, Joe's not here, so I don't think there's anything to update on that. So moving on to other business, board members updates. Nothing from either of you. Um, do we want to have a discussion around our discretionary fund? Because that's um, what Trish was presenting to us on. We can go. Do you want to wait for the other? Yeah, I oh, will. Yeah, I'd like everyone to be here, but I just, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm in support of it, but I'm probably more in support if they try and, yeah, cut down some costs too, because, yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think. Hmm. I am too. I am in support of it also. So it would be really good to be able to hear something. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, in, in support. I am in support. It'd be a great day. Um, it's just that sometimes, yeah, rather than money, if, other, if if there's another way of doing it and services or something can, can be supplied, it's just it's a help. So, yeah, that, that offer's there. So we can... Yeah. So what I might do is, um, or even ask Kaya to do, is follow up with Trish to see when this Infomax would have to be paid. And, yeah, so... And that would be a cash. Yeah. There's, there's no way you can get around that one. Yeah. yeah. So that's... Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this town that we home and that we are here to serve. Thank you, Lord, for, for the staff of the council, Lord, all the work that they do um, in in support of us and, and, and in support of this town, Lord. And I thank you for all the elected members on the council and community boards, both here and coffee. I thank you, Lord, for them and, and for calling each one. So, Lord, I just pray your blessing on each one now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Pete. Um, and that's our meeting done at 4 20. Eight. Thank you, everyone.